welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James and I review fountain pens, ink, and paper. And today I have the Jinhao X159. This may look familiar, may sound familiar. That's because it is. The Jinhao 159 is a metal fountain pen from Jinhao that is a rather large cigar shaped pen reminiscent of a certain Mont Blanc. And it is lacquered in black or several other colors. Kind of a heavy pen, but with a really good number six nib. It is a cartridge converter pen. This updates that pen and gives you what I think is actually a better option. This is a plastic or a resin pen with a more subtle clip, still cartridge converter, but, but with a number eight steel nib, the first, as far as I know, from Jin Hao. And how does it write? I think you're gonna be interested in that part of the review and not just because of the number eight nib, but because of the way the change in weight and material makes this, to me, a more usable fountain pen. So let's flip that camera and dive right in. All right, let's take a look at the Jin Hao X159. I really like this update. It is so much lighter than that original metal pen, even though I, this I really do like, and it is a bit of a classic, just some a neat, inexpensive pen, but there are some great changes. First is the lightness of the plastic. This is now a well-balanced, great writing pen. I like the new weight of the pen, but I also really like this simple, more tasteful clip than that original Jin Hao shield and sword, which this probably is one of the only pins that they put that clip on where the dimensions actually made a little bit of sense, but it still, for a lot of people, just overpowered the rest of the pen and it was just too much. So at first this might look, if you're used to this, this may look like, uh, you know, one of those stars that gets a nose job and they obviously chopped off too much. It's a little bit of that, but I don't think so. You get used to it, and this is a really nice update. The trim ring, you will notice, is also thinner and uh, just a little bit more nicely engraved with the Jin Hao and the model number, the X159. So there is that difference. The rest of the differences from the outside are not that noticeable, especially on camera, because it comes more to the difference between plastic and lacquer and metal and weight. But then you open up the pen and you really start to see a difference. I really should have counted that for you, shouldn't I? Okay, let's, let's count. Ready? That is one and two and three. So for some, that's a bit much, but it's yep right at three turns to get that off. Now, when you do, you are rewarded for your efforts. You will notice that this has now become a plastic grip section, which more closely resembles the Mont Blanc pen that this draws its design language from. The old one had metal, threads and then a completely different grip section with a metal trim ring at the end and of course a number six nib which suddenly suddenly seems smaller than it used to now that is both a strength and a weaknesses this number eight nib is as far as i know the first that Jin Hao has done, and I think they've done a pretty good job of it. The engraving is standard Jin Hao. They didn't break out in any way on the design of the nib. So that is just a Jin Hao design blown up on the Xerox, and uh, so nothing to write home about there. They did have to completely engineer a new feed for this pen, and so that's different. And if you were to take this apart, I've got, already got an ink, so I'm not going to do that today. But if you take it apart, you will notice there's a deeper ink channel and all of that good stuff. Uh, seems to function quite well. I have a zero issues with this pen. No dry outs, no hard starts, no nothing. It has just worked, and I appreciate that. And this is a fine. Now, that is going to be one of the drawbacks of this number eight nib in this pen. So one of the things people love about the Jin Hao 159 is that it has a number six nib, which mine has been good. However, however, 
you can take that out. You can put in, some people put a G-nib in there, like used in calligraphy and anime. Other people put in all different kinds because there are so many options of number six nibs, stubs, architects, all kinds of things you can put in the 159. Your options of number eight nibs, and I don't know what does and does not fit in here, okay? This is the only number eight nib I own, so I have nothing to even try at the moment. But your options, even if it took every number eight out there, which I'm sure it does not, are going to be few. So the drawback of the change is you will have fewer nib swap options. If you're just looking for a pen and you're not interested in swapping out the nib, that doesn't really apply to you, we can move on. So you take off the barrel and you find the threads are again nicely done. And if that is, you will notice in proportion to that number eight nib, this is a different feed section to accommodate that larger feed for the number eight nib. And it's pretty noticeable that that's what it is. Then you come to the standard Jinhao cartridge. This is the one we see on most of their pens, though not in that Jinhao 80 that I showed you the other day. And instead, this is a typical Chinese standard and fits international standard cartridges and converters as well. Converter. You will notice this one does have a metal trim ring, which not all of theirs do, so this may be an improved Jinhao converter. It's worked just fine for me. No issues there, and I love that they always include one. Now, do remember, as I put that back on, this does not have a metal insert. Those are plastic threads, so take care as you put that back on that section. For looks, I think the pen looks great. It's good looking pen, really nice weight balance. I like the change of the nib. Now let's do a quick size comparison in case you are not familiar with the scale of a Jinhao X159 or 159. Okay, for our size comparison to the Jinhao X159, we have on the right side a bunch of Jinhao. So that's the Jinhao 51A, the new Jinhao 80, the Jinhao 35 in stainless steel, and the Jinhao 100 Centennial. Then to the left, I have just a variety. So this is a Pen BBS 480 in vermouth green, the Lamy Studio, a Platinum 3776, a Lamy Safari, and the Pilot Metropolitan. And here we have the pins all posted, and here we have the pins unposted. Okay, the pen does post securely. And then, even though it's such a baseball bat of a pen, it is nicely balanced. I know I said it before, but I just think it deserves to be said again. This pen writes nicely, very smooth, with just a little bit of bounce to that steel nib. Maybe it's because of the size but I didn't expect that, but I got that. This is again a fine nib. Plenty wet, especially for a fine. So I'd say that new feed with the deeper trough is working just fine. And the ink today is that workhorse of an ink. Pelican Royal Blue. You can kind of see in my writing there that it has that little bit of bounce. It's not enough that I would call it flex. You can, let me just show you, this is no pressure. This is a little bit of pressure, a little bit thicker, not much. And this would be as much as I want to give it. And it's not a great deal of difference. But if I take my time, You can see there is just a slight bit. It's more bounce than flex, okay? But it makes for a really nice writing experience. I would say if you just write with it normally, don't try to do that. You'll just get the bonus every now and then of just a, a nice softer fine. Not a soft fine, but a softer fine.
I love how comfortable this pen is to write with. The size, the weight, the balance, all of it is really good. I don't know where you get a pen for this price, of this size, and of this quality anywhere else. West Texas towns of my childhood. Anyway, really nice writing pen. I mean, I really do just enjoy it. It's it's one of those pens. It's kind of funny. When I first wrote with the pen, my first thought was that this number eight nib was neat, but not a revelation. It wasn't anything like, oh, wow, or anything like that. However, the more I write with the pen, the more I appreciate this pen. And I don't know if it's the number eight or if it's just the weight balance, all of it put together, probably. I just enjoy this pen. And here is an extra bonus. Now it's not a boat anchor that weighs your pocket down and makes you think I shouldn't have put this in my shirt pocket. Uh, now it's a lighter pen and it's more carryable to me. And that makes me enjoy the pen that much more. So there you are. Like, share, subscribe, share what you think about the pen. If you have one, what's been your experience? And God bless you and have a great week.